So let me write one, two, three, four. Let me help you visualize. So I'll take a square, one square. Then I'll take one, one. That is two square. Then I'll take one, one, one. Just below that, that's three squares. Then I'll take one, two, three, four, four squares. So that's one, two, three, four. Instead of writing one, two, three, four, I'm writing one, two, three, four like this in this diagram. Now I'm helping you visualize. Now, if I want to reverse the order, I should take four, three, two, one. So for that, what I'll do is in the top line, I'll add one, two, three, four. So four squares. Next line, three squares. Next line, two squares. Next line, one square. And these two diagrams, if I bring them together, it's very easy to understand that every line will have five squares. So if I write the corresponding numbers on the right, it will be five, 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 five in every line. And there are four lines. So it's five, four times. I can write it as four times five. Now, what is happening? We are bring, taking it two times. One, two, three, four. We are taking it two times in the reverse order second time. So two times S4 is four into five. So S4 will be four into five by two. So what I did here using numbers, I'm just showing it in a diagram so that even if you want, you can't forget it now. It's, it's that simple now, right? There is a, there's nothing to understand. It's, it's, good. it's that simple now. And th this is why I told you that arithmetic progression is one of the simplest number patterns you can think of. And in a way, these are concepts which can be actually taught at an earlier level, maybe in fifth grade or in, even in sixth grade, not now. Now, since that we understood the same thing in, a, in numbers and diagrams, now generalizing is going to be very, very easy. Now, when I say generalizing, we'll look at, uh, we'll start using variables, right? So instead of writing one, two, three, four, now what I'll, I'll take any arithmetic progression. Now, when I use the word any arithmetic progression, I'm supposed to use general terms here. So let's take, go back to first term, if I take it as A and common difference, if I take it as D, I can write a general form of an arithmetic progression like this, A, A plus D, A plus 2D, A plus 3D and nth term, I'll write it as A plus N minus 1 into D. And if I put plus signs in between, I can write this as sum to N terms, that is Sn equal to some of this. Now, if I just reverse the order, now when I say reverse the order, I'll bring, I'll write it from last to first and it's still the sum of all the terms. I'm including all the terms up to nth term. So I'll write Sn once more. Sn is just representing sum to n terms and I'll write it as just below A, I'll write it as A plus N minus 1 into D. And just below the second term here, I'll write the second last term, which is a plus n minus 2 into d. Then, and so on, it will finish with a plus d and a. Now, if I take the sum here, I'll get 2 times sn. This is very similar to what we did using those four natural, in first four natural numbers. So, I'm sure you can understand. Sum of first and the last term, what we are getting, we know that first plus last is same as second plus second last. That is why all of them will add up to A plus A plus N minus 1 into D, which in this case is A is the first and A plus N minus 1 into D is the last. So I can also write it as first plus last. I can also write it as first plus last. Now, if you are taking these, so you can write either first plus last here. And how many times this first term plus last term, how many times? This will happen n times, right? Because there are n terms. This will happen n times as you can see here. So, 2 times Sn is, 2 times Sn is n times first term plus last term. So, Sn is n by 2, this 2 if I take it to the right, n by 2 into first term plus last term. 